Let's discuss the center of the Milky Way once again, specifically the region extremely close to the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star. The black hole we discussed not so long ago because of this beautiful new image that was just released showcasing the extremely powerful magnetic fields somewhere around the accretion disk. But this time we're going to focus on something else. We're actually going to talk about the region around the black hole, the region that contains a huge amount of stars. Now this is a really simple simulation, it doesn't really show us all of them, but in reality this region right here, that's only approximately a few light years across, is extremely unusual compared to everything else in the galaxy. It's very chaotic, it contains a tremendous amount of activity, and most importantly, within approximately 4 light years, it contains over a million stars. And you have to remember that the closest star to us, Proxima Centauri, is also about 4 light years away. And so here, in the same volume of space, you just have so much more stuff and so much more activity. But what makes this region even stranger is of course the fact that there is a central black hole, which makes everything here move really, really fast. The vast majority of objects move at velocities of nearly a thousand kilometers per second. And as you can imagine, they all move in different ways. Some of them go clockwise, some of them go counterclockwise, and some of them move in a different plane of orbit. And what you're seeing right here is, of course, some of the closest stars, the so-called S stars, that move at ridiculously fast velocities. The record holder here moves at approximately 10% the speed of light. But it's actually that bright star in the middle that has an orbit of 16 years that's probably the most well-known. It's known as S2, and it's probably one of the most studied stars in the entire galaxy. Apart from our sun, I guess. As a matter of fact, as a side note, it's such an exciting star and it's so different from everything else, and also it's actually so bright, that some of the studies even suggested that maybe if alien life exists in the Milky Way, it would possibly use this star to maybe find a way to communicate with everyone else, because anyone living in the Milky Way would definitely notice this star no matter what. And so, theoretically, this is also the most famous star across various extraterrestrial species. But anyway, that's not the main point. The main point is that things here are different. Stars move fast, things change fast as well, and there is a lot of interactivity between everything in the region. And more importantly, there are also certain objects that up until recently did not really make much sense. They were also discovered extremely close to the central black hole, but appeared different from typical stars. They actually appeared as a kind of an amalgamation or a kind of a mixture between a star and a cloud. And so the researchers now refer to them as the G objects. We actually discussed them in some of the previous videos in the description, but in a nutshell, a few of these have been discovered and their nature was not truly understood. They seem to basically go between a cloud and a star depending on where they are in the orbit. Likewise, there's another mystery in this region in regards to certain stars missing. Unlike other regions in the Milky Way, here there are no red giants. It's also sometimes known as the red giant mystery. There are a lot of other giant stars, just not the ones resembling Betelgeuse. And so because of these mysteries and because of all of these unusual things, some of the researchers have been trying to solve this for a long time. And now we have this new paper that might have solved everything all at once. A study by the researchers from the Northwestern University, whose papers you can find in the description, were able to kind of solve a lot of things by simulating this region using millions of stars in an orbit around a kind of a hypothetical black hole. So in other words, they recreated this using computer simulations. And pretty much right away they discovered that what seems to drive most of the activity here and most of the change in different stars is actually near passages and collisions. Because this is such a hectic region and because stars here move in all sorts of ways and move really fast, and also because there are like a million stars here, the frequency of near passages and collisions is pretty high. And the closer the star to the black hole, the more likely the collision, and obviously the more powerful the collision as well. And so it's really the distance from the black hole that seems to determine the star's fate and also what sort of a star is going to end up being in the next few millions of years. And interestingly, these super close stars with an approximately 0.01 parsec, or roughly around 2000 astronomical units away from the black hole, whose velocities often reach thousands of kilometers per second, because they move so fast, they don't generally collide face to face, but they do pass each other at extremely high velocities, basically touching surfaces at very high speeds. And so here the stars don't destroy each other, but they do end up losing just a little bit of an outer layer, sort of removing the outer shell from each other every time this happens. And so in some sense they kind of create 
a lot of extra gas that potentially orbits the black hole afterwards, and maybe once in a while ends up inside the black hole, increasing certain emissions. But over time, because these stars lose all of this extra mass from the surface, this ends up forming a very unusual population of stars close to the black hole that all resemble low-mass stars that seem to be stripped down, or may even appear very different from stars on the outskirts, or from stars we see around us. Basically because they lost a lot of their outer shell, and only the inner parts of those stars seem to be untouched. And so in a nutshell, most of the stars very close to the black hole are going to be much lower in mass. But as soon as you go a little bit farther away, up to a distance of 20,000 AU, or about 0.1 parsec, 0.3 light years, here the speeds are much lower, and so the stars, when they do pass close to each other, can actually collide. Because here the velocities are in hundreds of kilometers per second, not thousands, once in a while the stars can merge, forming something even larger. And turns out that in some cases, they can even do this many times, forming giant stars up to 8 solar masses in mass. And once these stars combine, they actually acquire a lot of hydrogen and suddenly appear much, much younger, even though the collisions could have been from really ancient stars billions of years old. But instead, these new stars seem to suddenly appear extremely young, which is actually what we've been observing around the central region with all of these somewhat massive, super young stars. But in reality, these stars very likely formed as a result of several collisions by much smaller objects. But even though these stars are technically older, once they combine into a large enough object, they only have a few million years to go before they go supernova. And so at least 10% of such stars seem to exist in this region, with most stars very likely experiencing at least one collision within approximately 1 billion years. And according to this analysis, there could be up to about 100 such stars in this region right now. Or basically 100 stars with very large masses, a result of multiple collisions. And those G objects I mentioned previously, potentially represent gas and shroud stellar objects, which might be also a result of a collision between two stars. So basically when two stars collide in certain conditions, it seems to form these unusual poofy objects that eventually is going to collapse back into a star if nothing else happens within about 10 million years. And so essentially they might represent recent collisions with these stars just displaying a lot of instability that's going to take some time to disappear. In their study they also make a prediction for the total number here, and it seems to match the reality. There's maybe a few dozen here and there. And last but not least, they also explain the missing red giants. Because most of these collisions would destroy low mass stars before they can evolve into something else, that's why we don't seem to see any red giants. Any star that's able to create a red giant basically ends up colliding and transforming into something else. And so overall, a relatively intriguing study. It manages to explain a lot of mysteries of the central region around the central black hole by essentially using a relatively simple concept that we know definitely occurs in here. So these stellar collisions or stellar near passages are probably the main reason why these stars appear so different and why many of them, like the G objects, appear somewhat expanded and somewhat poofy, yet other ones, slightly farther away, appear so young and so massive and should not actually even be there because stars like this only usually form inside various molecular clouds. Yet here we have stars that seem to be too young to exist in this region, which in the past was actually suggested to be a result of a major star formation, possibly out of nowhere. But this study explains it a little bit different. Basically here it's just a result of collisions that transform these stars into something that does not look the same. And chances are this is actually correct, because the evidence here is pretty strong. But because this is science, it will probably take some time before we know all of this for sure. But until we have more discoveries from this region, or until something else is discovered about Sagittarius A star, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.